speaker is Johas uh, Samat from uh, DBS Bank. Great, a data evangelist. Hi. Hi there. Mark. Great to see you. Good to see you as well. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Congratulations on all of the work DBS has been doing around APIs. It's been amazing. There's um, With COVID, I know that one of the things that DBS Bank was doing was making sure that your APIs were available to restaurants to help them move to payment structures so that they could more easily um, handle takeaway benefits. And it's great to see how quickly the bank jumped in on being able to make sure that APIs were a... Um, supporting structure during the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we, we are in a uh, very, uh, like a, a mindset where uh, trying to collaborate and as a tech uh, innovation in the banking sector, especially. So there are a lot of things to improve on. And then it's, uh, it, it's a process like we are going through and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good it's a good journey and quite big to topic to talk on yeah absolutely can you are you ready to share your slide deck yeah sure so i'm going to share my screen and then we've got the inception view of tunnel through okay great the, uh, I have a screen. Yeah, can you just delete? Uh, can you just click the X at the bottom right hand corner to remove your um banner? Is that cool? That's wonderful. Okay, great. Take it away. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, I am Yojas, uh, speaking from Singapore today. Uh, very glad to join our Paris API Days event. And today I'm going to talk about uh, democratizing data-driven decisions with the self-service tools. Uh, as Mark mentioned, like, uh, I'm currently working in uh, DBS Bank, uh, subject matter expert for the visualization tool and part of a uh, data platform team. Uh, official trainer for uh, data literacy uh, for the rest of the departments. And um, as a passion, I'm a hiker. So uh, today uh, I'm going to deep dive into how exactly we can use dem uh, democratized data uh, and uh, make best use of the centralized platform. So at first, uh, like I would like to ask, like why are we even talking about it? Uh, this is uh, the concept of data democratization is quite recent, like uh, two to three years back. And uh, the, the, there, there was a genuine need like uh, why we even came up with this approach, right? So I'm going to tell you a very small story for that. So when uh, in the older uh, era, like I would say uh, almost a decade before, uh, when the project development uh, used to happen and it, it used to take a very different approach, uh, so the business unit, uh, whoever is looking for deriving the KPIs for the business, they used to ask uh, the key person or any executive to, can I get my data? And I'm, I'm looking for so-and-so information. So the BA or executive used to go to the IT department and then ask for the data that uh, the business is looking for. And then uh, the IT department people, they used to churn out data, work on the data models, and then create it and send it back to the uh, business. Uh, so this is like a traditional approach that we follow in our mostly project development, uh, SDLC cycle. So this is, there is no problem in that. Of course, it works well. But when we have uh, democratization, uh, this approach takes a really long time to gather the report, explain business to the IT department, development, testing, and then approvals, and then present it to the, uh, to the management, and then decision making. So uh, what will happen if we don't use this approach, right? So this approach takes a lot of time, plus too much investment of uh, people and um, tools in the IT department. By having uh, a centralized platform, uh, we can actually avoid it and can, can give access to all the business users directly to the data platform. Uh, I know it sounds like we have full access to the data and it's a lot of information to digest. 
for example like when you uh, when you google anything on a google platform uh, it's just a platform but it just makes it easy for you to just type any word and that gives you uh, all the data you are looking for uh, and it will give you all the probability uh, of that uh, relevant word that you are typing in the google right so uh, why you tend to use google that much because it is very easy handy and you 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 don't have to think much as an end user, you just go to the uh, platform, you type it and you get it. So to simplify this, I'm going to explain how exactly we will make this process very easy so that even if you're from the business side, you can read the data and the data platform, like how we read it in the Google. So uh, before we uh, go to that, uh, there is like a genuine business case where we implemented it and uh, th these are the results uh, that we have so the normal uh, the traditional approach the time uh, required for the development was something like uh, one month for the data mapping and the data discovery data transformation took like one month then dashboard development then sit uat production environment and movements across and then access requests etc so when we uh, operationalize uh, the approach with a centralized platform we have actually reduced 45 to 50 percent of the time in all of these areas um, there is no uh, environment required as well as you are directly getting access to the final uh, outcome. And uh, these numbers, like 45 to 50 percent, uh, can reach up to 80 to 90 percent as well uh, by improving every time. Uh, what I mean is uh, when we implement such an advanced topic, it's, it's quite cutting edge and uh, not everybody will be comfortable using it. So when we when we actually uh, give this kind of access to everyone the very first thing comes like oh how how am i going to use it but when you start using you get some results and you uh, you can deliver what you can deliver in a half a, a half a year you can deliver in like one quarter or you can reduce the time frame accordingly and this can be improved uh, by having right set of uh, uh, pointers in the platform for that, I'm going to give give you one simple uh, analogy, an example. So when you go to the, every, every, we all go to the restaurant, and when you're hungry, you go to the restaurant and order, uh, look for the menu card, and then you order the dish. So whatever is available in the menu card, that is going to be uh, served to you. Uh, when you uh, so this is like an application, like the approach first that we discuss. So you are looking for data, you look at the menu, and then you send it to, uh, and the chef is going to cook that for you. What happened in the platform side, or I'm going to relate it to the cooking suit studio, where you get access to the backstage, where you can see all the uh, ingredients, uh, all the uh, all the materials available, and you can uh, prepare your own dish. Uh, by mixing and matching with different uh, ingredients. You can actually innovate something over there. And who can help you with it is like a uh, chef and the studio uh, owners. They can actually help you uh, understand which ingredient is useful for which kind of recipe. So, so that you can prepare your dish. So this kind of setup, which we have in the cooking studio, that is something we are going to build in the platform side, where you get full access to the data. You get full access to all the different tools and uh, you will get uh, the superhero like a platform leads uh, who will help you to understand what we have in the platform how you can make use of that and to make it easy so that you get something out of it and in a very simple way so uh, that's like a, a basic difference between uh, these two so uh, how we implement this approach? Uh, so in the organization, we follow like uh, four A policies, like ask, acquire, analyze, and act. So first of all, when you receive a business statement or business requirement, you ask the question first. Define what kind of uh, what kind of issue you are dealing with, uh, whether it is. Uh, correct answers, uh, correct question. Like uh, you can actually ask why, like why are you even working on this? Then once you have that uh, proper definition, you can acquire the data by understanding data, designing the solution, and then you analyze it. For analyzing, you can process the data and create your, uh, uh, and build the model. 
uh, once you analyze, you act on it. Like you deploy your end to the endpoints and then you uh, develop the dashboards and publish it. And the outcome is the business value uh, can meet or cannot meet. Uh, what I mean here is when you uh, when you are working on any business problem, it is always possible in the agile world, like the business problem or the directions are changing, like how suddenly COVID pandemic happened and everything changed. And even if you have certain KPIs, you have to change it to something else. So when we are working on these kind of uh, forays uh, policies, uh, what happens is whatever you had worked on, you can keep it as a uh, repository in the platform, like whatever you have built on, so that if anybody else in other department can actually make use of that, if that makes sense for them. Whereas you can reevaluate your question, and then revisit all these questions, like ask, acquire, analyze, and act, and then you repeat the cycle. So by doing this, uh, it, it, it becomes like a centralized repository where you have uh, certain solutions already developed. And you can also uh, get some of the inputs from different departments, uh, whoever is working on different kind of uh, uh, solutions or uh, business problems. So, OK, uh, before I actually uh, deep dive in uh, the other aspect, like how exactly we will implement this, like what are the uh, basic building blocks uh, for this data platform, uh, I would like to take a very small quiz. And at the end of the session, I'm going to flash the results for you all so that you know like uh, exactly uh, how uh, how you can uh, build on top of this. So, and, and the best part is like recently uh, there was um, API Days London event uh, where I uh, participated as well. And I have results from London event as well, which I can actually share with you guys. So I'm going to take like a half a minute for this so that you can use this QR code and then I'll talk more on that. Okay, so uh, for uh, for the data platform, so uh, in, in the organization, you have various departments, like you have uh, finance, uh, marketing, sales, uh, and then uh, busy side or various aspects, like various departments, uh, like maybe some people are working on the marketing side, like promotions or uh, finance side. So all this data is maintained in their own data sets. They have their own uh, big data platform and uh, they are working uh, on their own model, like in silos. So by having a centralized platform, they will all have to ingest the data in the centralized platform. And uh, when, when you ingest, you actually follow uh, the basic structure where you have a data ingestion pipelines, uh, then compute part, then you have data consumption. And in data consumption, uh, when uh, you use all the BI or visualization tools, and also uh, the most important part here is the data governance and the security throughout, as it is a centralized platform. So. Uh, uh, who will be the consumers here are like data stewards, data analysts, data scientists, data engineers, and uh, how they will be getting this access to the platform is with the help of the Salesforce uh, uh, portal, which enables you to understand the data platform. Like how I explained in the cooking studio, like uh, this is like a platform where we have uh, established like um, education system or uh, Center of Excellence, where everyone get trained from the business side to understand what we have in the platform, how to make use of that, and uh, how easily you can actually uh, understand the complex issues. And you also get certified. So even if uh, you are not very techy or data uh, person, you can actually understand it and then work on it. Uh, the most important part when we are uh, working on a centralized platform is uh, microservices and the APIs, which enables you to uh, get data uh, across different uh, departments as well. So what I mean here is when you are working on your own data set, your KPIs and what you can derive from that is only uh, but when we have access for uh, all the metadata of all other departments, you can actually take it as a uh, uh, point where you can compare this and derive more from these uh, 
having this platform. So the, these are the uh, pros and cons when you are working on a certain data and when you are working on a very centralized platform, right? So uh, the tech innovation that propels uh, data democratization is uh, data governance and the strategies that we use throughout this platform. Then what are the tools and the infrastructure that we are investing in? Because uh, when we are uh, talking about self, it's also important like we use these self-service tools, uh, which helps users to uh, feel comfortable to use this uh, platform rather than having a legacy tools or very a manual where development efforts are required. So uh, that's very important. And then how you drive your uh, data and insights. So uh, some of the areas to focus is like uh, data visualization softwares, uh, data federation softwares like uh, governance, and cloud storage, like because everything is centralized, then self-service application, and having e-learning or the workshops for educating uh, people on that. So uh, what has changed by democratizing data? The very uh, important change that happened is the culture change and the tool uh, adoption rate have led to the faster access to the data. As we have seen in the business case I shared, you have actually reduced uh, the time frame required for developing something. So uh, it, it you can actually double up the KPIs and you can achieve more in one year. So these kind of changes are really important in the fast pace uh, implementation. But yes, it, 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 it is a cultural change. The way we used to work uh, by giving requirement to the IT department, it is going to be like, go get it and just get trained yourself and then work on it. So there is a culture change. Uh, like uh, data, uh, data discovery provides a broader view to the metadata and avoids silos. Uh, by having this centralized architecture, you get access to the metadata of uh, the all the department, all the data. And uh, instead of working in silos, you actually uh, feel more collaborative. And you can also use these uh, repositories created by different departments and share amongst each other. So the development activities are less, and you uh, get more outcome in a very short span. And uh, the self-service platform, platform allows you to get to that level. Like it enables you, it helps you to get trained and understand the complex issues. So of course, whatever I talked is nothing comes very easy, right? So even though we feel like uh, this is conceptually quite nice, but how am I going to really uh, implement it? What are the challenges that we can have? The, uh, the basic challenge that we can face in the centralized approach is uh, giving access to all non-technical people can actually lead to uh, some sort of a situation like, okay, uh, they misuse data, even after getting training, or maybe they, uh, you know, uh, attend the workshop, but partially attend, or, you know, not, not really uh, putting full focus while working on the data. So, but they will be the one who are working on the centralized platform, which leads to a lot of challenges sometimes, like somebody uh, query on a huge data set and uh, the query is not correct, for example. So this can actually uh, in, uh, affect the rest of the platform uh, business units or uh, some other department who are actually accessing the same platform, right? So there is a risk. Uh, but how we can improve it uh, is the only way to do that is by training more and more people. Education is very important in this aspect because the more we train non-technical users about this tech aspect, the more we will uh, get the best outcome because uh, the solution has to be optimal and uh, get the best result with the best practices as well. So time to time revisiting, having e-learnings or having something which is ad hoc kind of a learnings is very important. Uh, the second point is the data security. So uh, like the more user have access uh, to this data set, the risk and the challenges increases uh, to maintain the data integrity throughout the platform in the various areas. It's important to have these improvement points on all the tools and all the areas so that we don't uh, miss out uh, on any of the aspect and we tokenize uh, the PII data and uh, have this uh, uh, information uh, in a very secured manner in the centralized uh, platform. So these are the most important uh, points and the concerns that we, we can have. 
And yeah, so takeaway for today is like the culture change that we will have from the democratizing data. Uh, Self-service platform will help uh, to enable you to uh, uh, get the center of, uh, to get the data faster with the help of center of excellence. So uh, thank you very much. Actually, I'm going to uh, go to the quiz again. So for those who have missed the uh, QR scan before, uh, please, uh, you can feel free to scan the QR, uh, QR code and uh, answer. There are like fun questions, like just a few questions. And uh, yeah, the, and I'm going to flash that soon. Plus, feel free to connect with me on my LinkedIn or if you have any questions or uh, anything to discuss. And uh, I'll be happy to do that. This was fantastic. I'll let Johas um, have a minute to just uh, quickly check your survey results. Do you want to, uh, you can focus on that for a second, then let us know the results. Yeah. The, sure. um, so while you're doing that, so some of the things that I guess jumped out at me were about this. Was, so I've been doing a project um, with a nonprofit group, and this is perfectly aligned. So you can see how it works with with business, with banks, you can see how it works with nonprofits. So it's about building that some of that core infrastructure around data governance, um, alleviating some of the concerns around data security and data privacy, baking that in. But then also the, one of the issues or one of the opportunities with data democratization is that it unlocks the value in the data that's being held by the organization. So what we've seen with the nonprofits is in the past, They've been in a situation where they can use their data to, they spend so much of their time cleaning and preparing their data to use it for um, reporting to their funders. But they, do, aren't, uh, they don't have time to then use it to actually plan future services. So how, um, so, you know, and, the, and, so the, and that's unlocking that value to be able to like use it, to be able to say, okay, we need to uh, allocate more resources in this area and provide services there because that's what our data is telling us rather than just spending all the time with the data, just cleaning and reporting it. How are you seeing the democratization of data um, unlocking that kind of value? So it's m m not just about reporting the data, but it's about like driving opportunities to have insights with the data as well. You're, you're, are you seeing, you're seeing some of that, ch that culture change? Is that, how does that work with the culture change and everything? So, yeah, uh, so uh, the culture change here is uh, like we are making this platform open for everyone, right? So, uh, so for many of the business users, especially if uh, you are working only from the business side, uh, data could be a taboo. Like, how am I going to use this? And I don't know these big uh, technologies or the implementation or architecture. So by, ha uh, by having these uh, set of uh, things in place, you actually feel comfortable uh, to use it because you understand it's not that difficult because we have the tool selection, which is self-service and easy to use, I would say. So the tool selection is also important. And the culture changes, rather than I'm asking uh, about data to somebody else, can you explain me? I'm actually going to go there, try out something and uh, prepare my own dish. Like, like how we did in the cooking studio. So this is a very big culture change here, right? Because we are not very used to it, but uh, we are trying it out. So it, it takes uh, some time. So there is a period when uh, like how, how COVID impacted us, right? We were not used to work from home, but now we are accustomed to work like that. And it is coming to the zone like it is a new normal. So yeah. the, the, the same way it will also kind of change uh, in a way and uh, people uh, start feeling comfortable using centralized and you know democratized data and just access by themselves. So okay, uh, that, that's right. like a change. So, yeah, sorry to cut you off there. We just have to be careful of time, Mark. Um, Quichpers yes. is lined up ready to chat. Do you want to share with us some of the findings? Oh, this is the results? Great. Yeah, these are the results that we have. So uh, what will you select? So few people said application, few said platform. Most people want the cooking, the whole, the whole cooking uh, approach. <laughs> yes, right. So it is possible, right? People will, uh, might uh, still like to use application, 
uh, like the usual way where I have a many card, I don't have to think anything, but I just want my data or my report. So because it's a comfort zone and we have been working that way, there will be many people who will prefer that way. Right. So it also depends which solution is suitable for which kind of business cases and to evaluate it properly and then uh, going ahead with that. So it's possible. And uh, then we have uh, what are the challenges in democratizing data? How do you uh, how do you agree on measuring the value you get from data? Yeah. Hmm, interesting question. Mm. That's a big one. Okay. That, that is really interesting question. <laughs> okay, so um, measuring value you get from data. Okay, uh, so first of all, when we are deriving any insights uh, after getting uh, processing data and after having uh, the K right KPIs on top of that and then building dashboards. So uh, the, me uh, the measure is, uh, it could be time, or it could be uh, there could be a lot of factors. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm assuming like uh, here uh, the question is moved from the business uh, aspect where you actually measure your KPIs whether it is right or not. And uh, if it comes to the data or the platform side, it can be uh, through uh, various factors like. Um, I have my year-on-year uh, -year or month-on-month -month report, and I want to compare it with the last year. And for example, the business case that how we evaluated the 45 to 50 percent of the change, uh, that's something we measure in terms of time. So mostly those kind of things. Wow. That's I hope I answered it. No, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Look, we do need to um, invite Mark up next so we'll we'll jump off there but um perhaps on if you could um share some of those findings on your linkedin and um on twitter as well some feedback from the surveys that will be our audience will go there to have a look at um the results but thanks so much uh for your time now i'll ask you to leave Thank the stage